Hi everyone and thank you for tuning in to this lecture. So the title of this lecture is Coliform Bacteria and the Invict Test and my name is M Murphy and this lecture is designed for microbiology year two. So the outline of this lecture and what we're going to cover. We're going to start off with coliform bacteria and what they are and then we're going to discuss the importance of coliform bacteria. So why are you learning about this specific type of bacteria? Then we're going to go on to the Invict Test which is a test to identify this type of bacteria. Now, the Invict tests are very, very broad, and it's a series of five tests used to identify coliform bacteria. And because they're so broad, we're going to break it down into two lectures, so we're not throwing all this information at you at once. So, in lecture one, we're going to cover the indole test. And with the indole test, we're going to discuss the tryptophanase pathway and indole production. And we're also going to discuss the methyl red test, and that includes fermentation and acid production. And then in lecture two, we're going to move on to the Vogue's Proscore test and the Citrate test. So because, again, the tests are so broad, we're going to divide up between two lectures. And on the right hand side here, you can see little bands that are popping up there. And on the left, we can see good bacteria and bad bacteria. So good bacteria obviously helps us with digestion and also helps us um, when we're sick. And bad bacteria it causes infection. But good bacteria in food and water can be an indication that there's bad bacteria present because they both come from the same place, the gut. So coliform bacteria. What is coliform bacteria? So they're rod shaped. They're gram negative. They do not produce spores, so they're non-spore forming. And they have the ability to ferment lactose with the production of acid and gas. And they are an indicator of the sanitary quality of food and water. And they are an indicator because they are found in faeces and in large numbers. Now, not all bacteria found in faeces are bad. And not all bacteria found in faeces are good. But if bacteria in faeces is found in water or food, it indicates that it's not very sanitary. And this is what... Uh, coliform bacteria look like so they're rod shaped as you can see there they're gram negative as you can see in the bottom picture so they stain negative a pink color so they have a thinner peptidoglycan layer so they're gram negative and with all these characteristics we can use to determine if coliform are present in food or water so like I said they are rod shaped so to, in order to determine the shape of the bacteria in your sample, you would use basic microscopy. I also said they were gram negative. So you would use a gram stain to determine if they were gram positive or gram negative. Now, these are two tests you all know how to carry out at this stage. So they're two tests that is already in your block of knowledge that you know. So they're two tests used to identify coliform bacteria. And they're non-spore forming. And last week you covered the malahide green capsule stain. So from your results, you remember that the capsule stain is green. And if there's no capsule present, there is no green under the microscope. And they also have the ability to ferment lactose with production of acid and gas. So for this test, we would use lactose broth inverted Duran tubes. And as you can see there in the picture, on the left is um, no gas production. And on the right, you can see gas production. And again, that's a lab we will carry out in the future. But just to touch on it right now, just to see that when there's gas produced, you can see an air pocket. And when there's no gas produced, you cannot. So why is it important to determine the presence of coliforms in food and water? So like I said already, it's indication of sanitary conditions. Coliforms indicate fecal contamination. So if they're present in water, it means that the, there is wastewater entering into the water supply or the water wasn't treated properly to remove any contaminants. And if they are present in food, HACCP, which is Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point, was not followed and the food was not prepared or handled correctly. So we know how it gets there. So if it gets there, what happens if it's ingested? The lowest threat is food poisoning which is severe, but it's not the highest threat. People can actually end up dead if they ingest too much coliforms, which are pathogenic, which have the ability to cause infection. So 
best case scenario is if you ingest this bacteria in high enough numbers, you will get food poisoning. But worst case scenario then is serious illness or death. 